Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Ashley and in today's video, I am going to be showing you guys how I organize my curriculum. So this is a video request. I did get someone, I don't, let me see if I can find the comment and I'll put it in the video. But someone did ask me to show you guys how I organize my curriculum and I'm going to be showing you guys that in today's video. So if you guys are new to my channel, I am Ashley and I am an in-home daycare provider and I will hit my ninth year doing home daycare in April. I can't believe that I'm already gonna hit my ninth year, like time flies. So, again, if you are new, I do create curriculum for my daycare. Before doing my own curriculum, I used to just pull resources from Google, look up worksheets, pull them, print them, and let my students do them. And then I did get a lot of people starting to ask me, like, hey, do you sell your curriculum? But it wasn't my curriculum because, again, I was just pulling resources from Google. Or if I went to the dollar store and found a workbook, I would just, cut out the papers and let the kids do it. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't mine. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I should start developing mine. And then I started to develop mine, and that's what I did, and my curriculum is available on TBT. So I have three months with me, specifically I have January, February, March. I do have other curriculums for sale. I know I have a Halloween one, a back to school one, a fall one. I think there's a few more. They're all on my TBT store, but I just pulled the first three to show you guys what I got going on and how I organize it, okay? So I'm gonna start off with January, but I'm not gonna to go too into detail because that's just gonna take too much time. So I'm just gonna give you guys a brief overview. And then at the end of the video, if you guys have any questions, you guys can just leave me a comment and then I'll respond to you guys. So this is my January binder. I did design the cover and the binder spine. So I have these available on my TPT store. I'll include a picture here. I do have months January to December. I did it because I feel like it looks so cute. Everything is organized. And then when you have these up on a shelf, you can see what months you got going on. And again, I just think it looks cute when you have a nice cover for it. So this is the month of January. And when you open it, this is what it looks like. So I got these binders off of Amazon. I got a pack of 12. I think they're cardinal binders and there's 12 months of the year. So I just bought the pack of 12. And I believe they are one and a half inch binders or two. Don't quote me once I find out exactly the size. I'll put it in the description box so you guys can check it out. But I got a 12 pack. It was like, I wanna say $30, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but my ballpark is 30. Um, and I think that it's worth it. It covers you for the entire year because it's 12 binders for 12 months. And then they've lasted me for years. I've had these for like four or five years already. So I think it's worth it. So I did also purchase these binder rings off of Amazon. It came with a ton of binder rings. And then I have my flashcards here. So every curriculum that I have has four words. I just think that it's really good with vocabulary. Some of these activities, I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, majority of them are for toddlers, but there are a lot of things in the curriculum that you can do with infants, and flashcards, it's one of them. Not in infants, but you know what I'm saying, they build the vocabulary. So I usually go over these during circle time, it's just easy to throw them in, and it also builds the children's vocabulary. Then the first thing that I have here is my weekly layout. So. I like to keep this first. I already know what everything means because I developed the curriculum, so I keep this one first. And it's just a good overview. You can tell what letters, numbers, shapes, and colors you're working on, the theme, and then your activities are over here. So this is something that I laminate. As I go, I'm gonna let you guys know what I laminate and what I don't and what I print on regular paper and what I print on card stuff because I do get a lot of DMs like, hey, should I laminate this? Hey, should I print this on regular paper? hey, what do you do for X, Y, and Z? So I'm gonna let you guys know as I go. So this one I do laminate, and I did print it on a cardstock because it's durable, and if I ever wanna pull it out, I don't gotta worry about it getting ripped or anything like that, so it is laminated, and I do have it inside of a sleeve. Uh, sheet protector, I'm sorry, because it goes in the binder, and I don't have to hole punch my actual sheet. Then my next thing is my instructions. So again, if you guys are New, I would probably put the instructions first, it's easier. But I have instructions for every activity. Now all of the instructions, I try my best to get as much detail as I can. I'm not perfect, I'm developing it on my own, I don't have anybody revising my stuff. I do find typos, if I find a typo, I'll edit the typo and I'll update it on TPT so you guys can print out the one that doesn't have the typo. But this one I also print on cardstock and I don't laminate it because I just keep it in my sheet protector. Now this has the activities, the supplies, and the instructions on how to execute every activity. So I have Mondays, I have Tuesdays, I have Wednesdays, oh my god, Thursdays, and I have Fridays, and then I have my sheets. So I code all of my sheets. This one is winter 1-1 and then on the actual layout, it'll tell you winter 1-1. That's what you're doing for fine motor. So I listed all of them just so that you know which worksheet you have to pull out. And I code them by day. 
So winter one, it's the first week. I'm trying to do two, three, and four weeks of every theme. It's just hard because again, it's just me. And usually the day of the week is the second number. So it's winter one, which is week one, dash one. One is Monday, two is Tuesday, three is Wednesday, four is Thursday, and five is Friday. It's gonna be a little bit confusing, but once you guys start using the curriculum, you're gonna understand it. So this is winter one, dash one. It has instructions at the top. The children are just to match the picture with the word. I usually read the word because they can't read and they'll pick the picture and then they'll line it. So I'll say, okay, where's the snow? They'll find the snow and they'll line it. Where's the hot cocoa? They'll find the hot cocoa and then they line it. Then this one is winter 1-1A. So I put them in order from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this is 1-1, this is 1-1A, and then this is the craft that we would do that day. Then we have this activity, which is a tracing activity. These are not coded, but on the template, it tells you the letter E and L tracing sheet, and you just pull this out. This one wintered 1 2, so it's gonna go in order. So I usually just look at my layout and then I go down and I put the worksheets in order. So I'll do 1 1 A, the snowman craft, the tracing worksheet 1 2. Do you get what I'm saying? So everything is in order. So I do that for the entire week, and then whenever I do do crafts, I like to complete an extra craft. So I'll have a student do one, and then I'll take their foot and stick it on another one to do one for myself. And then I laminate that and I put it in here so that whenever I want to reteach the theme, or if you guys want to reteach the theme, you guys know what your final product's gonna look like. So everything is on cardstock for me. Now these are only my master copies. When I'm actually doing a copy for the class, I do it on regular sheets of paper because cardstock is expensive. So, so this one right here under the penguin is the template. This is printed on cardstock. I'll stick it on my copy machine, make a copy, and I print that on regular paper and they do the craft on regular paper. And then I do that for all of my worksheets. This is also on cardstock just because in the past I've had regular sheets of paper and they're just way more flimsy and they rip a lot easier. So I print my master copies on actual cardstock, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and then this is February. Again, it's the same thing. You. My, my stuff fell out. But again, flash cards on the binder ring, and then I have my weekly layout, and then I have my worksheets, worksheets in order, a craft with the sample, and then again, a craft with the sample, and then worksheets, another worksheet, another worksheet, another worksheet, and then you're done. But I have everything in order from Monday through Friday. And then this is my March one, which I just released. And then again, the binder's fine. March, yeah, open it. Have my junk over here. <laughs> and these are like extra copies that I have. They're on regular paper. So when I do reteach the theme or when I do teach the theme, I have some right here. And again, same thing, cards, my weekly layout. Um, my instructions I didn't print out yet, but my instructions would go here. And then I have my worksheets. And they're also, like I said, in order from um, which day I do it, etc. So that is basically how I do it. I love my curriculums. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm biased, but I love colorful stuff and crafts that parents can keep for years to come. That's why I like doing a lot of quilt prints, a lot of hand prints. Those are the activities that you can do with your infants, the arts and crafts, the flashcards, the worksheets, not so much, but they can also do the gross motor domain. Um, so there's a lot of things that your infants can do, and there's a lot of things that your toddlers can do, and then if something is a little bit too hard for your toddler, maybe you can break it down to them and maybe give them an answer. Like, like for example, this one right here is basically a pattern, so it'd be yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, and they would take the dot markers and they would finish the pattern. This is gonna be really hard for a lot of kids, but if you have a toddler, I would say, okay, I need a yellow marker and we're gonna put it right here. Give them a yellow marker, have them put it right there. You can give them the answer, but they're still doing the work. And then yellow, green, yellow, green goes here. Where's the green marker? Have them get the green one and stamp it there. I have two year olds that they're not gonna understand the pattern. They're really young, but if I break it down to like layman's terms, they'll be able to do it. You get what I'm saying? So that your infants can do too. Again, not your infants, your toddlers, your younger kids can do that too. So it just really depends on the activity and then you just modify it to work with the age group that you have. So again, I do have my TPT store. I'll have a link down below if you guys are interested. And that, sorry it was very long, but that is how I organize my binders for my curriculum. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you guys have not already and I will see you guys in my next video.